Okay, so from last week, where's blood going to in the pulmonary circuit? Okay, next, where's blood going to in the pulmonary circuit? Okay, going to the lungs, okay? So, how many circuits are there? Two. Okay, so if pulmonary is the first circuit, what's the second one? The systemic circuit. So, um, what was what would that mean? If the pulmonary circuit is sending blood to the lungs, which it does, what's the systemic circuit then? Okay. So, with your your brief introduction on human anatomy, which what would have higher pressure? The which side of the heart? The left or the right. So remember, you're looking at a mirror image, okay? So, of course, what that means, I uh, sometimes I can do this pretty well, sometimes I'm not so good at it. Okay, and I suppose that's probably, that's not quite how we want it. Yeah, that's probably a little more accurate, okay. We don't want a hole in the heart here. Okay. Name a chamber. And where does it go? Okay. Name a chamber and where does it go? Okay. There's four chambers here. Okay. Name a chamber. Okay. Okay. So you say left ventricle. Is that this one or this one? This one? Well, that's the right side. Shouldn't I write RV here for? You're right-handed, correct? So why isn't this the right ventricle then? Because you're looking at a mirror image. Okay, another chamber then. Okay, where does it go? That's the left side. Yeah. Okay, so then what are your top chambers called then? Okay, that's a vessel, right, atrium, okay, so if this is the right side of the heart, which it is, then this is, of course, the right, oops, left atrium, okay. So then, going back to our original question, okay, is these two top chambers, are they part of of now this is a specific question is this part of the pulmonary or systemic circuit the top chambers do you think do you, you don't for sure know all of this that's why we're learning i just want to see what you know would these specifically be part of the systemic and pulmonary circuit you say yes Yes, 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 okay. Well, what happens is as blood's coming back to the rest of the body in this chamber, it comes back from the lungs in this chamber, then it basically just drains down into each, okay? That's why we said it's a specific question. So the answer to that would be no, okay? And, and that's why, that's how we learn, okay? So... Why do, would you think, so which one of these then is the pulmonary circuit and which one is the systemic circuit? So where do you think blood goes after it leaves the right ventricle? To the lungs or to the rest of the body because it's part of the, this one's the rest of the body? Well, that's what we're asking you. Yeah, but you got lungs on each side because it's in the medastium. Okay, this is part of the uh, pulmonary circuit on this side. This is the systemic circuit over here, which means there's another aspect on why would this chamber be so much larger than any others, okay? You got to take into account this is only sending blood to the lungs, okay? Which means since it's in the medastium, you have 
course, a right lung sitting over here, okay, and then a left lung sitting over here. That's not a whole lot of distance for that to pump blood to, which, and that's why it's smaller, okay? But then once you get into the systemic circuit, this is pumping blood. Like you mentioned earlier, you have this very large vessel coming out of here called the what? That is your aorta, okay? This means it's going up at this point, the ascending aorta. This is the aortic arch. This is the descending aorta. And then this is dividing line we had up on the board. What might this dividing line possibly be? This is a muscle right here. Such a letter D. Yeah, this is the diaphragm. So then this is going to separate these two cavities. And the top cavity would possibly be what? Starts with a T. Because of the vertebrae that are behind there. Now, this is your thoracic cavity. Then anything below there including your stomach, your liver, pancreas, intestines, okay? That would be your abdominal cavity. And then once you get down into the lower portions of your digestive tract and, and the reproductive structures, then you're getting down to the pelvic cavity. Okay. okay. So, let's go ahead and continue. Again, the, these, are, these are hard questions. There, there's nothing easy about this, and that's why we spend time on it, okay? Because once you have this content and information, it's yours to utilize and place into your long-term memory then. Okay, so I think this is about where we left off. Okay, yes, double circuit, okay? The systemic circuit, okay, sends this oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body, okay? Then, hmm, we start on that side. Should we start on this side this time? Are you sure? Okay, name not a specific vessel, just any blood vessel. There's five of them. Good, we got five people. You don't have to say aorta because that's too specific. You can be way more broader than that. It also starts with an A. And once someone knocks the first domino over and you say, oh, this makes sense then. Someone's got to knock that first one over. Okay, next. Any, you don't. The aorta is one of them. A vein is one. What's another? Arteries. What's another one? See, now we're getting to be a little more specific. A little smaller than an artery or a vein. Say that again. Okay, you could do that. Those are really, really small. That's true, but it's still an artery. So where do you think you find that coronary artery? Yeah, that's exactly where it is, okay? What would be maybe a little smaller than an artery or a little smaller than a vein? Okay, you could use a venule perhaps or an arterial and the smallest of all blood vessels. A lot of people are wearing these today. Yeah, a lot of people wearing caps, right? There's one right there. So, capillaries. That's right. Okay, so this is the second portion of this double circuit. So what came before this one? Because remember, if it's the second part, this has oxygen-rich blood in it. What had to have taken place before this? In the lungs, the pulmonary circuit where you would see this taking place, blood that is oxygen depleted so it can exchange, okay? So then we talked about some of these veins, the largest deoxygenated vessels are all, this was a trick question, again, I think we said on Thursday's 
um, presentation, are all arteries red? No. Are all veins blue? No. It's the direction that it's going from the heart. Because if you are sending blood away from the heart that has no oxygen in it or is oxygen depleted, that's going to be your pulmonary artery, okay? Even though it's blue, okay? We, otherwise, I think what we're mainly taught in elementary is that all arteries are red and all veins are blue. No, that is not the case. And then another aspect to look at is, oh my gosh, I can see these blue veins in my skin. There must be blue blood in there. I hope not. We don't believe that, do we? No, it's not. It's just different colors of sh or shades of red depending on, upon how much oxygen's in there. Okay, so this is, is this where we begin then? Okay, here's that medastium, which would then mean that is this portion right here. And if I remember right, why would this have two lobes in this lung and this one's got three? That was, I don't think you wrote it down. It was only verbally said. And this is offset just a little bit underneath the sternum. So again, this size of the heart just a, is just a little larger. So that's why there's only two lobes here and three lobes on that side. Okay. So then, okay, coverings of the heart. Okay. So I also have chambers on there. But that will be coming up here shortly. Okay, there's some specific terminology here. In other words, what does proximal mean to you? Is that close or far away? Got a 50-50 chance. What's the opposite word? Uh, that's... <laughs> Starts with the letter D. How's that? So the example we could give, okay, we're talking about points of attachment, okay? So that example would be, you could picture this joint right here, or the elbow, okay? So when we're talking about a point of attachment, that has to go all the way back to the sternoclavicular joint, okay? So would the elbow be proximal to its point of attachment in the shoulder, or would it be distal? Proximal is closer. So the elbow is proximal to the shoulder where you could say the wrist joint then is distal because it's further away. So what we see here then encloses the heart and proximal ends of large vessels, which means the, these large vessels are then encapsulated inside of this uh, pericardium then as well. Okay, so you need to be dismissed at 945. Okay, so let me just, let's see here. All right, so we're going to keep going here for a little bit. So then you'll be responsible for that upon your return. It won't be a whole lot. Okay, so uh, keep in mind that this terminology, this, again, this is not easy. Because if it was easy, what would this classroom look like? There would be a whole lot more people in here. Now, is that because of difficulty or interest? You think it's both? Okay. All right. But not everyone chooses to be in here. I see we're up to 14 minutes. All right. Put sunblock on. It's going to be windy. I think, you know, oddly enough, I didn't put any sunblock on on uh, Friday when we were at the Grand Canyon. I probably should have, but... And that's something that you can only experience. You can, you can only explain so much in pictures. Okay. Google.
What river runs through the Grand Canyon? That's perhaps what we're looking up. Well, no. That's what she asked. She doesn't schedule me Sunday oh. morning at Sunday night. Oh, okay. That's mm, more important than, than this. No. Oh, okay. So what happens, okay, this pericardium then encloses the heart and these vessels. The, there is such a thing as inflammation within this area. And the reason that's important is, okay, think of possibly rhinitis, maybe. You probably would not know that. Inflammation inside your nasal cavity. One you are familiar with would be bronchitis. Inflammation where? In your bronchial tubes, okay? So if someone has pericarditis, what would that mean to you? Inflammation. Inflammation where? The pericardium. Yeah, inflammation of the pericardial sac because that's what encloses the covering of the heart. And there are three structures, okay? And then the epicardium, okay? The innermost layer of the heart, okay? And then we, we see or start talking about your specific chambers, okay? I want to do this one, and then, okay, we'll get through these valves then too. That would be a good way to start tomorrow. Now, when it comes to uh, answering these questions, okay, it's just a, a, a way of pointing out, okay, this content is difficult. Yes, yes it is, okay? There's nothing easy about it, but once, and you ladies are fairly comfortable with talking about all these different structures that are associated with this, that if you give an answer that doesn't make any sense or we don't know, there's, that is okay. Again, the reason that it's okay is because that's how we learn, okay? And, I, and again, I think you ladies are comfortable sitting in front of each other, okay? So, how many circuits are within the heart? Even mammalian heart. How many? Four. Too many. Two. Two, that's right. Two circuits, see? Yeah. Okay. So a, a general question here, whether it's the left or the right atria, okay, these are receivers of blood, whether it's from the lungs or whether it's from the rest of the body, okay? Then when you look at the bottom portion of the heart, the ventricles, okay, it's either going to send blood to the lungs or the rest of the body. So again, if blood is going to the rest of the body, that is part of which circuit? Got a 50-50 chance. It's going to the rest of the body. Well, that's what does it, but what's that part of the circuit called? Systemic circuit, which means, okay, are these part of the systemic or pulmonary circuit? Mm, no. Not really, because this is going to receive blood, then let it drop down into the ventricles. So you, you could say it's part of the pulmonary circuit on a very limited scope because it's receiving blood from, from the lungs. Okay? So that part would be true. So you could say that is part of the pulmonary circuit. Okay. The ventricles are the bottom portions. Systemic or palm both of them that's correct okay so we see this here septum separates the left and right side of the heart sometimes what happens okay for separating the left side from the right side here okay is that possible 
in humans. Now there's a hole in this heart. It, it, yeah, it would cause a heart murmur. And is this something that people can live with? Yes. I, I think it depends upon the degree of what that septum is. But if that septum is large enough, what could possibly be the problem with having a hole this big in those chambers of the heart? Because remember, you... We just separated that out. You have a systemic and a pulmonary circuit. Okay, so if this is the systemic circuit, what type of content is rich in the blood? Oxygen. Okay, if this is sending blood to the lungs, does it have a lot of oxygen in it? No, it does not. It's got some, but not very much because it's oxygen depleted. So what happens is if you have this hole in this heart, what's happening to this oxygen poor blood? It'll end up on this side, and then this is sending oxygen, supposed to, to the rest of the body, which would not only include the lungs itself, the heart itself, Somewhere in here, uh, your, your stomach, your pancreas, your intestines, liver over here, all the way down to the feet, okay? But blood also has to get up to the top of the body, which would include your brain, of course. So if you have oxygen-poor blood getting over on this side, it's possible that you're sending depleted oxygen up to the brain, and that would certainly have to be uh, corrected. Because otherwise, yes, you can lose uh, brain tissue because it's just not getting enough oxygen. Okay, what do we have left? See, tomorrow we have, we don't have class tomorrow, okay? So what do we have here? Try, uh, we can start with the heart valves tomorrow. Or do you feel more comfortable doing that today when you're in here face-to-face -face as opposed to a video? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so the tricuspid valve lies between the right atrium and right ventricle. Okay. Because you have a tricuspid valve, a bicuspid valve. Okay. And then what does pulmonary mean to you? Think about that for just a moment. And we'll probably have a heart model out yesterday. yesterday. We'll have a heart model out tomorrow. So here you're writing down what these are, where they are. Tomorrow you'll be able to place this together with what these structures are and, and what they do. And then the final portion that we'll do today. This is sometimes called the mitral valve. Okay, that would be up in the upper left-hand corner, or sometimes it's called the bicuspid valve. Okay. So when we look at this terminology, hopefully we can separate out what these chambers are what they do, and you'll be able to keep them separate. But for, for our purposes, okay, should if you want to go by the mitral valve, that's fine because that means bicuspid, okay? 
but if you want to help yourself out keeping these separate, if you go by tricuspid and bicuspid, other than straight up memorization, how do you think you could keep them separate? Otherwise, here is a little, little clue. Okay, what you can do okay, is we know that on this side, right under here, okay, you have this valve right here, which is the tri tricuspid valve is located right here. Okay, then. What is on the left side of the heart between the two chambers? Bicuspid valve. So this is a bicuspid valve right here. Okay. Two lobes of the lung. That's true. There's three on this side. That's true. Or, since this is the right side of the heart, it's got an R in it. Okay, which would tell you this is the right side. That's where that tricuspid valve goes. Then you, if you could use your logic as well. There's two lobes over here, so that means bicuspid, or there's three lobes of this lung, which means tri. That's a good way of anal an analogy as well. Then if you keep that separate, then it doesn't really matter. You can use mitral or bicuspid valve. Okay. Then in between on this back side, because you can't see it, but this very large artery has a specific name. The aorta. And inside this aorta goes inside the heart, and then there's a chamber about right there. Or not a chamber, but a valve. And that valve is called what? This, correct? Aortic valve. Okay. That means then on this side, okay, you're going to have a pulmonary. And sometimes they say pulmonary semi lunar valve. So, what do you suppose lunar means? Lunar, lunar. I believe it's a Latin term looking up at the night sky. What up? in the night sky might have something to do with lunar. The moon, whether it's a, a lunar eclipse or something to that effect. So then what that means is, if I'm not mistaken, that um, valve is probably going to be somewhat shaped like that, kind of like a, a, a lunar type shape. Now, one of the things that I, I think sometimes come, comes up is which one of these do you think is going to have the highest pressure? The atriums or the ventricles? Start with that. So you got who's right then over here? Okay. The ventricles, the pressure is much, much higher because the chambers are so much bigger. And then also between these two, which would have the higher pressure? The left ventricle or the right ventricle? The left ventricle is much higher because this is part of which circuit? Systemic or pulmonary? The systemic means this has to pump blood through the entire body. This only has to pump blood to where? The lungs. That's why the chambers are offset and a little bit different. And I would be led to believe that one of the things that happens down here, the pressure it would be so much better, or just the way we're designed, is that this valve over here, looking at it from the top, kind of looks like that, because it comes to a point 
right here, and it's got three parts to it. That's why it's a tricuspid valve. Then when you're looking at the bicuspid or the mitral valve as you're looking down, you see, maybe it kind of looks like seams of a, a baseball that are a little closer together. That's why it's called the bicuspid valve. Okay, so I think that's enough for today. We'll review these uh, for tomorrow. We'll catch up to you next time.